Why you know the name O.J. Simpson might depend on when you were born. So here's a little backstory. On July 9th, 1947, Orenthal James Simpson is born in San Francisco, California. He makes a name for himself at USC playing football and winning the Heisman Trophy in 1968. He goes on to play for the Buffalo Bills where he's the first to reach 2,000 rushing yards in a season, setting a record. When he retires, he's the second best rusher of all time. But he isn't just good at sports. He's charming and handsome, getting roles in commercials, becoming commentator for ABC's Monday Night Football, and appearing in the Naked Gun film franchise. This is to say he's extremely famous, like everyone knows his name and his face famous. So when news breaks that OJ's ex-wife has been murdered and he is the suspect, everyone goes bananas. But then the OJ story gets even more bananas. So backstory. In 1985, Simpson marries Nicole Brown, who is white, which becomes important in the case because even in the 90s, interracial marriage is something, you know, people whispered about and raised eyebrows. But their marriage doesn't last. Nicole reports Simpson to the police for domestic abuse. He pleads no contest and is sentenced to 120 hours of community service and two years probation. They divorce in 1992. And then on the night of June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman are found stabbed to death outside Nicole's home in Brentwood, California. On the night of June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman are found stabbed to death outside Nicole's home in Brentwood, California. And so begins a case that would ensnare everyone who came in its path, lawyers, jurors, police, witnesses, the media, and the entire nation. Shortly after the two are found murdered, the police zero in on OJ, finding evidence on his Bronco and on his property. He agrees to turn himself into the police, and this is where it starts to get wackadoodle. Rather than turn himself in, OJ flees. Just remember how famous he is, he's not getting far. But he's missing and people are worried. His longtime friend Robert Kardashian goes live on the air to read a letter from Simpson that proclaims his innocence and talks of suicide. People are worried about him, and then his white Ford Bronco is spotted, and so begins a slow speed car chase down the 405, with Al Cowlings, his former teammate, at the wheel, and OJ in the back with a gun to his head. The car chase becomes a national spectacle, making national news and even bumping the NBA Finals to a corner of the screen. 95 million people tune in. Simpson finally surrenders, and so begins the trial of the century. OJ has a team of the best lawyers, Robert Shapiro, F. Lee Bailey, Alan Dershowitz, and Johnny Cochran, who in most ways become the face of the trial. He's facing off with Deputy District Attorneys Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden. On June 20th, Simpson is arraigned and pleads not guilty. But what seems like a slam dunk case starts to disintegrate before the prosecution's eyes. First, the grand jury has to be dismissed on June 23rd thanks to excessive media coverage. Then two key witnesses sell their stories to journalists so the prosecution doesn't want to use them. And then there's the jury. Prosecuting attorney Marsha Clark apparently has underestimated apprehension toward interracial marriage and the role race plays in the case. But even so, the prosecution has physical evidence on their side. There's a bloody glove, bloody socks, blood on the Bronco, most of it found by LAPD detective Mark Furman. But the defense is shrewd, painting him as a racist who had a motive to plant the evidence against a famous black celebrity. And then there's the nail in the coffin, the bloody glove. The defense has Simpson try on the gloves, but they don't fit, inspiring Johnny Cochran's famous line, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. And the jury does just that on October 3rd, 1995. You'd think after all this hoopla, OJ would try to avoid any future run-ins with the law. But on the night of September 13th, 2007, OJ and a group of guys, some of them armed, burst into a Las Vegas hotel room and take hundreds of items of valuable sports memorabilia. OJ claims the items he took were his, stolen from his home years ago, and he just wanted these personal keepsakes back. The case goes to trial. Four of the men who went with OJ into the room testify against him after accepting plea bargains themselves. Then, October 3rd, 2008, 13 years to the day he was acquitted, OJ is found guilty of armed robbery, kidnapping, and 10 other counts, and sentenced to 33 years. But he only served a little over eight years, getting parole on July 20th, 2017.